Hello, my name is Jared Stone and I am a Senior Technical Curriculum Developer here at Jitterbit. Today we're going to dive into a tutorial that is a part of our Jitterbit Basic series that shows you how to quickly connect to your data systems using the Jitterbit Harmony platform. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to use the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio to show you how to quickly configure the Salesforce.com connector and create a very basic operation using that connection. So let's jump to Cloud Studio. That's where we're going to be building this operation. Okay, so right now we need to build the project first or create that. So the first thing that we want to do is give this project a name. So any time that you're uh, naming really any component within uh, your integration builds, what we teach is that you always do it in a very informative and descriptive fashion while following your organization's best practices. Okay, now for this one, what I might do, I might do something like SFDC to FTP tutorial. Okay, something short and sweet and to the point. Next, we have the environment. Okay, we'll need to choose the environment. You see on my on my instance here, I have two options here. I'm just going to select my dev environment. And then the third area down at the bottom is the description area. That is optional, but it does allow you to give some context as to what's really going on within the project. This can be very, very helpful uh, within something like a team atmosphere where you know you're sharing this data with uh, a group of people so maybe you bring someone that is newer onto the team well they can get up to speed maybe a little bit quicker uh, by uh, reading things like this description here they'll understand a little bit more about what's going on within the particular project so what we'll do now is go ahead and click the start designing button so now we've entered the Cloud Studio design portal area. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to start by creating or making the connection to Salesforce. You can see over here on the right hand side, the com component palette side. This is where we're going to, uh, you can either manually scroll through all of these, but I'm actually just going to uh, filter that by typing. Okay, so we need to make the connection here. Okay, you can uh, have the, the name here for Salesforce endpoint. That's perfectly fine. And then you need to put your username, password, and security token data in. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do that really quickly. Okay, so once I have that information in, it's always the best practice to go ahead and test that connection. So basically, it's just verifying all of the information that I've put into these uh, these areas here. One other thing to note uh, is that anywhere that you see an asterisk, that is an area that is required um, for data to be input. Okay, and you can also see here where you could variableize the things such as the username and the password just by using square brackets. So basically just creating project variables to, uh, to leverage here. But we're going uh, the other way in this, this uh, case here. We'll go ahead and save the changes. And now we have for the Salesforce endpoint a bunch of different options here. Query, insert, update, ups or delete so on and so forth. What we're going to be doing here is we want to query the accounts within the Salesforce org. So I'm going to select that and drag and drop that over to the design area. Okay. The first thing I can start by doing is just renaming this if I want to, this operation that is. So I'm going to call it SFDC to FTP. Something there, just a little descriptive. And then I'm going to enter the endpoint that I have created, but basically now what I'm doing is defining the activity. Okay, so I could say something for the name query accounts. Okay, if we come on down, what object do we want to select? That's going to be our accounts. Okay, so then we'll come on down and click next. And then from within the accounts object, we have the ability to select a bunch of different fields. Okay, so I'm going to select a few fields here. Um, let's start by selecting name. Okay, so we'll get the name and you can see as I select those they do populate over here in the text box on the right hand side. So let's do billing city, billing country, billing postal code, billing state, billing street. We'll go ahead and grab the fax and the phone. I think that should do us. We could add a where clause, but we're not going to do that in this case. So let's just go ahead and scroll on down, click next at the bottom. And you can see the data schema there as far as the response goes. Let's go ahead and click finished. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create the transformation. So we'll hover our mouse over, you see the plus icon that comes up, and then click New Transformation. We'll start by renaming this. I'm just going to call it SFDC to FTP. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is come over here to the right hand side. Remember, uh, this is where we're going to be defining the target. In this case, uh, it's going to be over on our FTP and it's going to be coming over. We want this data to come over as JSON. Okay, so we're going to select the define schema option. And then we're going to select the use sample file option. We're going to provide a new schema. In this case, we could just say JSON. And then we could load uh, some data, upload a file. In this case, we're all we're just going to input the data right into the text box below. Okay, and you can see that we have a validation of that schema down at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and save those changes, and then click finish. And now those fills are created. So what we could do is we could take a count, and we could drop that over to the target side, select auto map. You see a few fields map for us automatically, phone and fax. The reason for that is because it's based upon the similarity of field names. So we'll have to manually map these other fields. Not a big deal. We'll take name over to customer, billing city to city, billing country. Let's see if we can take that down to country here. Billing postal code to zip, billing state to state, then we'll go billing street to address, and then we should be good to go. All right. So what you could also do, you could leverage the preview option, which would load some data in and allow us to see this before we actually made it to the deployment and execution phase. But we're going to go ahead and just return to the workflow for the time being. Now what we need to do, we've we defined the, the source in this case and then the transformation. Now let's go ahead and define the target here. So I'm going to start by uh, looking for my FTP over here on the right hand side and we'll select that. So we're, we're creating the endpoint here. So I'll just name this FTP is fine in my case and then you'll put the information here for the host. It is secured FTP and then my username data. And then test that connection out of a best practice just to validate the information that I've put in. All right, so now we see the FTP has been defined. So now we need to um, define that activity. We'll be writing this data. Okay, writing is the target option there. So what we'll do here is go ahead and dive into this. We could rename this if we want to something maybe like uh, FTP JSON is fine. We'll leave the path blank in the files name area. Let's just call this result underscore square bracket and we'll leverage some global variables here to dynamically uh, or give us a dynamic naming convention, I guess you could say there. But we'll use our date and time variables and then we'll say .json is the file extension. We'll remove the use FTP rename option and click next and then finished. Okay, so that right there, that has it's really completed our build. So really just in a few moments there, we've completed this, okay? So the next thing to do is we'll just go ahead and deploy and run. Okay, so we can see this start to work for us. We see that it's been submitted. If we wanted to, we could open up our logs within Cloud Studio. That's opening up and here we have a success. So what we should be able to do is go over to our FTP and now we can refresh. And there we have the result. And here is our JSON data that come over. And you can see it for each 
customer here. We have Gene Point, then we have United Oil and Gas, so on and so forth, along with the related account information as JSON, just like we wanted to do. And that right there completes this micro learning on how to connect to a Salesforce instance and move that data over to an FTP as JSON. For deeper training opportunities, please check out our learning platform, Jitterbit University. You can access this at university.jitterbit.com. You will need an enrollment key to access the training content, and you can get this information from your customer success or alliance manager.